Welcome to TS booth. Uh, I will be presenting uh, a little session at how to design a Bluetooth low energy sensor board. So just come in and, uh, and have a look. Uh, it's a pleasure so, so many people could come. <laughs> so let's start. So basically, uh, I'm going to just talk about a small portion of the TI connectivity portfolio. So I'm going to talk about the Bluetooth low energy solutions. As you can see, we have a very broad portfolio, so you can just visit our experts corner to get more information about the rest of our connectivity portfolio. But today, we will talk about the CC2540 and the CC2541. So, it's important that you choose the correct Bluetooth device uh, when you're making a low power sensor network. Uh, if you want to do high data rates or music, Bluetooth low energy is not your uh, solution. But if you want to do low power sensors, uh, with a long battery lifetime and you wouldn't have to pay any M5 cost to Apple, then Bluetooth Low Energy is your, your option. So, Bluetooth Low Energy. Then you will have plus one years on coin cell batteries. You will have a low data rate, so it's perfect for sensor applications. Uh, and you won't, as I said, you don't have to pay any M5 cost to Apple. So it's a very easy and, and flexible way to connect to an iPhone or an iOS device. Uh, devices using Bluetooth Low Energy is called Bluetooth Smart. That's the consumer product. And, and the uh, tablets and smartphones are called Smart Ready. So that's the differentiation about the Bluetooth Low Energy solutions. So the most important thing when you want to design your own uh, Bluetooth Smart sensor application is to have a spec. So I went to Kickstarter the other day to just see what's out there, what people are trying to do. And I found something called the Hove. It's uh, basically a device that will help you locate your keys. So what will you need uh, to do such a device? You need the Bluetooth Low Energy system on chip. So you can use the TC2540 or the CC2541. You probably need some buttons uh, to turn the device on and off. And probably we need a buzzer to indicate uh, where the keys are. Or also you can uh, have the iPhone uh, make a sound if the keys are too far away from you. For instance, if your keys are stolen or if you leave the keys on the table at the coffee shop. Another interesting solution I found on Kickstarter was the Blue Buddy, which is a dive logger. So basically, uh, divers want to track their, uh, their diving data. So on such a solution, you, might, you need the, the BLE solution, of course, to, to communicate your data. Uh, you might need a pressure sensor to, to indicate how deep you have uh, been diving. And maybe also a temperature sensor to measure the temperature uh, of the sea. So basically what you need then is uh, the BLE device and some low power sensor. And it's very important that you have low power sensor because this device, you want it to, to consume as little power as possible and, and possibly use coin cell batteries. The last project that I want to mention is something called Mycestro, which is a 3D mouse uh, which you put on your finger. You can replace your old mouse and just use your finger to point on your screen. So for such a device, you once again need a Bluetooth low energy system on chip, the CS2540 or a CS2541. You would possibly need an accelerometer for a gesture and movement to track your movement of your finger, maybe a gyroscope, to even enhance the performance and, and implement some gesture features, uh, and possibly some haptics uh, to get some feedback uh, on, on the movement on the screen. So all these uh, applications you can find on Kickstarter is a Bluetooth low energy device and some low power sensors. Uh, another important aspect is, is the battery lifetime. As I said, on the coin cell battery, you will have something like a plus one years uh, with Bluetooth low energy. But it's, it's important to, to select the connection interval, how often you want to read from, from the sensors, and then uh, select the type of battery that you want to use. So as you see on, on, on the bottom right here, uh, you have different batteries ranging from the AAA batteries with a lot of capacity, but the batteries are, are, are a lot bigger. Then you can go down to the Quad A batteries, from, uh, which are smaller and has a little bit less capacity. And you can go down to the small button cell or coin cell batteries as the CR2032 batteries, which is, uh, has less uh, capacity, 
but are very, very small. Uh, as you can see on the slide here, uh, on a coin cell battery uh, with a typical pulse transmission, you will get something like 180 microamp hours. Uh, if you have continuously draw on the battery, you will have a little bit more. But uh, even with a pulse transmission like the Bluetooth Flow NG, you will have quite good battery lifetime on a coin cell battery. So, let's go to the sensor tag, which is a sensor application developed by TI. So our spec was to target smartphone app developers. Uh, we didn't want to, them to do any embedded software knowledge and, and do, the, and, sorry, do any embedded software design. So we developed it so you could control all the sensors directly from your smartphone or tablet. We wanted to use a lot of low power sensors. So we put in the TMP006, the Texas Instruments uh, IR temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, a humidity sensor, an accelerometer, gyroscope, and a magnetometer. So we should enable a lot of uh, app possibilities for uh, app developers out there. As I said, all the sensors should be selectable and configurable from the smartphone or the tablet. Everything should be connected through I2C, and it should be coin cell battery driven. We also put in some LEDs and some button for user interaction. And we made it very compact and small. So this is the schematics of, uh, of the sensor tag. I'll just go through some of the key points that you need to, to think about when you're designing your own uh, Bluetooth low energy sensor application. Uh, it's important to copy the reference design of the RF part uh, as closely as possible in order for you uh, to not have unwanted spurs. Uh, one of the important features then is to, to use the, follow the decoupling capacitor structure that the IC vendor has chosen for you. Also, uh, on the RF path, path uh, make sure to follow the design. On this one, we did it quite easily to use an integrated IC uh, surface mounted ballon. Uh, but if you have SMD components, just follow the reference design and use the same uh, components as the IC vendor. We also put in two components here for antenna matching. Uh, in order to get optimal performance of the antenna. In addition to this design, we put in an additional uh, interface to connect to other TI devices. That is not needed. And here you can see all the sensors that we, we added to the sensor tag. You see all the six different sensors. And once again, the key point here is to follow uh, the IC manufacturer's uh, design uh, guidelines. So, so we just follow uh, what the sensor manufacturer said uh, in order to have optimal performance for the sensors. Uh, on, on, the, on the power segment and, and the peripheral, uh, I just want to point out one key feature, and that is to always add a debug interface, because you will need uh, to have an option to, to debug your code. Uh, you can either put in, as we did, uh, a fixed uh, a fixed uh, header, uh, connection header, or you can put in some, uh, some, uh, some points there just to, just to solder on wires for your debug connector. So th this is the sensor tag design uh, as we des designed it. So we integrated the industrial designers at the early stage in order to make a very good uh, design look of the, of the sensor tag as well. So in the early phase, we sent them the PCB design so they could design the plastics around it. So they come up with a hard inner uh, shell in order to protect the PCB. And then we put a, a rubber outer layer to protect it. So th this, is, this is how the PCB looks. Uh, once again, the important factor is to copy the reference design uh, as closely as possible, and especially with the RF part. And on this design, you can see but it's also important to copy the reference designs with some of the sensors. So in the middle here, you see that we have carved out some holes in the PCB. And that's to enable better airflow around the pressure sensor. In addition, uh, around the temperature sensor, we had to have some opening in the ground layer in order to get better temperature readings. So once again, the key point is to follow the IC guidelines for the different sensors and the RF part. So the next step you need to do is to develop your firmware. So as I said earlier, our spec was that all the sensors should be individual selectable. Uh, it should also be possible to actively read out the sensor data or passively. So when passive, passively, 
the sensor tag will send out whenever it has a new uh, data reading and it will be sent to the smartphone or the tablet. So as you can see from, from the table here, all the different sensors have different voltage, different upload frequency, and also you need different amounts of bytes for the, uh, for the data. So it's important that you read through your data sheets in advance and then you specify your firmware. And this specification ended up into this, into the firmware. So you have the data, uh, which is XYZ coordinates for the accelerometer, and each of them is one byte each. You have the configuration, which is basically turn on and off notification, and you have the period of the accelerometer, defining how often you want the accelerometer to, to send you some data. This is then translated into the source code. Uh, the source code for the sensor tag can be downloaded from ti.com. Just download the BLE stack, and the sensor tag will be part of, part of the stack itself, as an uh, example. Uh, another important part of, of, of the firmware is the generic attribute, which basically def defines all the services and characteristics of a Bluetooth low energy de device. So on the sensor tag here, I'm only showing the accelerometer service, which has, as we said earlier, the period, uh, the notification, and the data characteristics. You can see the complete GAT table on the sensor tag uh, wiki page, which you can find on the link here. Uh, another useful device developing your Bluetooth Low Energy devices is the Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy Device Monitor. Basically, it's a software tool generating the GAT tables for you. So you can connect any Bluetooth Low Energy device and you will see all the characteristics and services associated with that Bluetooth Low Energy device. This is a very helpful tool in developing your own Bluetooth Low Energy device. So, this is an example of the Bluetooth uh, Low Energy Device Monitoring, uh, searching for or scanning for the services from the sensor tag. As you can see here, you have all the different sensors uh, that's available on the sensor tag. If you click on the plus sign, you will then see the different characteristics associated with all those services. So once again, on the accelerometer data, you have data, the configuration, and the period, all selectable from the tool and you can update the sensor tag directly from the BLE device monitor. The BLE device monitor is also freely downloadable from ti.com. So lastly, the last thing you need for your sensor network is to have your app. So then you need to be an Apple developer. Uh, so you need to register on, on the Apple website and, and be, become a developer. That costs $99 for, for one year. Then you need to download Xcode you start developing your own code. Uh, the code is written in Objective-C. Uh, and if you find Objective-C uh, hard to use, then there is another option, and that's to use a tool called TechBasic. It's basically an app that you can download to your iPad or iPhone. Then you can start writing in BASIC instead of using Xcode. And you can compile it through the TechBasic program and then upload it to, uh, to App Store. So if you want to upload something to App Store, you need to be part or registered to the iTunes Connect. It's a very easy and flexible solution to, to upload um, your app to, to App Store. Uh, you just need to fill in some, some key uh, data for your app, uh, upload the app, and then it will take something between seven and eight days for your app to be available on App Store because it needs to go through an approval phase from Apple. So on the right hand side, you can see the sensor tag app with a login screen. Uh, you can select and deselect all the different sensors and you can update the frequency of the accelerometer and magnetometer. And you can see all the data available from the sensor tag. The sensor tag app will be uh, downloadable from ti.com uh, in the next few days. So you can take our example and use it as a reference and start developing your own code for the sensor tag or other BLE devices. Uh, when it comes to Android development, um, for the moment, there's no common API for Android. So the, the situation is kind of fragmented. So we're waiting on a common API from, from Google before we will develop our own sensor tag app for Android. So thank you.